We're going to spend some time now discussing the sampling distribution of uh, three statistics. There's x, p hat, and x bar. Though I spend some time here talking about x, which is the count variable, okay, the number of successes in an independent trials, that's actually uh, like a statistic, all right, because we have a sample n and we're counting the number of successes in that sample. When instead we look at the proportion of successes, we're talking about p hat, so the results from the count variable are directly related to the variable p hat. In fact, p hat is derived by taking x, the number of successes in n independent tries, and dividing it by how many tries there were. And the proportion of successes is going to be p hat. Okay, so these are directly related. Because of that, I begin with a discussion about x and then um, simply find the results for p hat. Then we go into a discussion about x bar, and that's the sample mean. All right. Okay, we're going to simplify things first by discussing um, a variable that is called a Bernoulli random variable. It doesn't sound simplifying, but it has a special name. Um, and it identifies whether a success was observed or not. So on any given observation, either we see what we're looking for, our success, or we don't. So we'll code yes, we saw what we were looking for as 1, and no, uh, we didn't as 0. And we would need to know in advance what the probability of observing the success was in order to be able to uh, say anything about what to expect. And once we know the probability of seeing what we're looking for, p, then we also know the probability of not seeing what we're looking for because these are complementary and must sum to one. So this is this is like our sampling sample space, and it is also our density or probability distribution function because we have all the possible outcomes and their probabilities. Now from here, we can calculate the mean and the variance using the rules for means and variances that we learned back in unit four. How did that work? Well, the mean will be the weighted average multiplying the probability of an outcome by the outcome itself and adding those together. This is a weighted average. Okay, that's represented here. So we're gonna take the outcome zero times its probability plus the outcome 1 times its probability, and when we put this together, we see that this piece turns to 0, and so the expected value, or the mean, of the Bernoulli random variable will be p, the probability of seeing what we're looking for, our success. What about the variance? The variance is the weighted average of the squared deviations from the mean. Okay, so how do we do this? We will take each of the outcomes and subtract the mean and then square the result. That's the deviation from the mean times its probability. The outcome minus the mean squares result and multiply it by the probability. Do some algebra to simplify and if you did this differently but still came up with the same result, that's fine. The result is that the variance is just p times 1 minus p. What we're ultimately interested in is the probability of a number of successes occurring. This is the random variable x. Okay, so how do we jump from um, looking at one 
success, and the probability of that, which was the Bernoulli random variable, to um, several successes, or counting the number of successes out of n trials. Well, since the outcomes are just zeros and ones, I can just add together the outcomes of the Bernoulli trials to get x. This is convenient, because again, I can apply uh, my rules for means and variances, this time for the sum of random variables, the mean is just the sum of the means, right? Each of these, S1 through Sn, have the same probability as the tries are independent. So I'm going to just be adding Nps, so my answer is Np n times p. What about the variance? The rule for variance is said that the variance of a sum of random variables is just the sum of the variances. So that's going to look like this if I go back and remember the variance is p times 1 minus p and I'm going to sum them because they're identical each time then there's n of them. All right, So that's the variance of x, the number of successes in n independent tries. And so this only worked, remember, because those are independent tries. Now you understand the importance of that assumption or that condition. So from here we have what we'll call the uh, mean of x. I'll put a subscript to remind you that this is for x, the statistic known as the number of successes in n independent trials, and its standard deviation as the square root of n times p times 1 minus p.